By now, I think we all understand the attraction of deep section wheels like these. They're aero, they're fast, not least, they look and sound mean. For that reason, aero wheels are often the first big upgrade for triathletes in pursuit of faster bike splits. I mean, we all see the pros using them, so surely we should follow suit. But how much speed can they actually provide? To look into this, let's take a step at standard shallow aluminium wheels like these. The sort of wheels that come standard with many bikes and perhaps seem perfectly adequate. But what's the difference when upgrading them to a set of wheels like these, some deep section wheels? In this instance, we're using the brand spanking new Zip 858 NSW wheels. Oh yeah. Well, I'm going to get straight on into this today with a little experiment. So, Zip tell us that their deep wheels that they've kindly supplied to us for today's video, the new 858 NSW wheels, are their most advanced and fastest wheels to date. Which is quite something when you consider their range and their history. But not only that, they also say that not only will they make you faster on the bike, they'll also make you faster on the run. I mean, technically that would be cheating using wheels on the run, but kind of get what they mean and we'll get onto that shortly. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do an 11k loop at 200 watts and the reason that I'm going to do a loop is because that way I'll experience a headwind, tailwind, crosswinds and also differing road conditions, real world conditions. And then I'm going to switch the wheels over straight away and then head straight back out to eliminate the conditions changing too much and make it as fair as possible. I know, the things I do for you guys. That said, my effort is far easier than the one that Alex Payton has done over on GCN Tech, where he is actually riding the other new wheel set from Zip, the 808 Firecrest. So if you'd like to find out a bit more about those wheels and how they differ from the 858 NSW wheels, then make sure you head on over there after watching this video, obviously. Right then, time for that caffeine hit, and then time trial time. Run one, shallow wheels. That was a lot of fun. Now time to swap over to the deep section wheels. And in case you're wondering, yes, I am running the same tire setup and pressures from wheel to wheel. Just one has tan sidewalls because I really like tan sidewalls. But actually for any eagle eye viewers out there, you may have actually already noticed that the tires are on the larger side. And that is because the 858 NSW wheels are actually optimized for 28 mil tires. Not only that, they're also tubeless and hookless. Why is this significant? Well, it actually allows us to run lower pressures in our tires, which in turn reduces rolling resistance while smoothing out the ride. So that in theory, our bodies are fresher for the run. I know, it kind of throws away all our previous ideas about fast tire wheel setups. But yes, a wider rim shape paired with a wider tire actually reduces tire deflection, meaning the tire conforms to the road surface better and therefore reduces rolling resistance. And in turn, it actually creates a better tire to outside rim interface, meaning that we get a more aero tire to rim transition. Wow, I think that caffeine may only be kicking in right now. But also let's not forget the weight saving because by going hookless, it's actually improved the manufacturing process. And Zip say that it's actually allowed them to be more specific about where they reinforce the wheel and it's allowed them to shave a whopping 10% off the overall weight. I mean, what's not to like about that? Yeah, right, I did say I'd do the next test right away, so let's go. Run two.
All oh, right, that felt fast, but what do the results say? I didn't do a fantastic job of holding 200 watts, but I wasn't a million miles off. So with the shallow wheels, I held 208 watts, whereas with the deep section wheels, I held 206 watts, so a two watt difference. Times though, the shallow wheels, I went 19 minutes and 48 seconds. With the deep wheels, 19 minutes and 41 seconds. So around a seven second difference, and also actually two watts less technically with the deep wheels. Now, if you extrapolate that over 90K, so a half Ironman, that's just shy of a minute, and over 180K, a full Ironman, it's just shy of two minutes. So quite substantial and pretty impressive, really. But some of you may be watching this thinking, that's really cool, they look really cool, but you would never see me riding on deep section wheels. I mean, if you measure these, there are somewhere between 82 to 85 millimeters in depth, depending on where you measure them, obviously, on that unique sawtooth profile. So pretty meaty. And to be fair, this is a reasonable concern. It's easily one of the biggest things to put people off deep section wheels. All it takes is a strong crosswind or a big gust, and it can feel downright scary. But why is this? Why does it happen? And how much of an issue is it really? By increasing the depth of the wheel, you're of course increasing the surface area that you're presenting to the wind. So whilst you will feel this on the back wheel, it's of course the front wheel that you're gonna feel this more so because it can turn, which can make it feel rather unstable. So you may have the most aerodynamic wheel set up out there, but if you are finding yourself battling with crosswinds to the point that you need to get up out of the aero bars, or in fact just come off the power even for a split second, then those aero gains could in fact be wasted. So what is it about deep section wheels like these that potentially make them less stable in crosswinds? Well, let's start here then. So the tire or the leading edge splits the airflow and then the rim tries to control that airflow. And the idea is that the larger the rim profile, like on here, the more it tries to smoothen and control that airflow, which means that there's less turbulence coming off the tail end of that rim which means less drag and theoretically means that you can go faster for the same effort. But throw a crosswind into the equation, or in sciencey terms, increase the yaw angle, this is where things can get tricky. Because now with the wind hitting the side of the rim, the airflow can suddenly detach from the wind. So dumping all that airflow in one big stall. Imagine someone applying pressure over and over, and over to the side of the rim and then suddenly letting go be rather off-putting if you ask me. But a lot of these worries and stigma are actually a hangover from older wheel designs. Now, traditionally, they had a V-shaped rim, like this, which, whilst they performed very well at zero degrees yaw or head-on, anything beyond that, and you would quite often feel that stalling effect. They were notoriously bad. Fortunately, though, wheel designs and rim designs have come on significantly since then, so welcome to roidal-shaped rims. Yeah. I know, what a name. Basically, U-shaped rims, wider and more rounded. And this shape interacts far better with airflow in all directions, meaning that the airflow actually stays attached at higher angles. But zip haven't stopped just there, because in case you're wondering, the reasoning behind this rather interesting and unique sawtooth profile, well, isn't just for aesthetics. And I'm not gonna bore you terribly about vortex shedding, but basically, it does more frequent but smaller dumps of air, meaning that it controls the airflow better rather than you experiencing a sudden buffeting effect. And apparently, it's all inspired by bumps on a humpback whale's pectoral fins. Fancy stuff, if you ask me. So, don't write off deep section wheels if crosswinds are your concern. Also, because these particular wheels are incredibly light too just 1,530 grams, which is lighter than a lot of shallower wheels. So a lot of gains for very little cost in weight. Now, do let us know what you think to deep section wheels in the comments section down below. Do you love them? Do you loathe them? Are you scared off by them? Or have you simply never had the opportunity to use them? Let us know down below. And whilst you're at it, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and go check out GCN Tech's video because Alex is doing some pretty tough TT efforts.